So Bob Condon grows pumpkins and corn <laughs> and Cottonwood Farm outside Lafayette. He runs the popular pumpkin ranch and Christmas tree lot at the corner of 287 and Isabel Road. He improves his soil with manure applications, both early and late season cover crop mixes uh, that are terminated by roller crimping or mowing. Bob's goal is to find the right combination of covers which can be roller crimped to make a weed-free bed for pumpkins. And Bob is a 2022 Soily Award winner for the highest percent of fungi in his soil. So anyway, as you said, Cottonwood Farms, main business is a pumpkin patch. So our major crops are pumpkins and winter squash. Been at it for about 27 years. Still trying to figure it out. Anyway, the big one of the big problems with pumpkins, is we work the ground, if you're doing it more conventional way, you get a nice seed bed, then uh, we do a tillage pass just before we plant. You're putting uh, one seed every five to nine square feet, depending on the pumpkin. So that's a lot of area for growing weeds. And uh, we do that tillage pass, then we plant. And as soon as those pumpkins emerge, we're doing more cultivation and tillage. And it's and eventually hoeing and expensive. So I've been thinking for years about, you know, there's got to be a better way to handle the weeds. Got into looking at the uh, various soil health practices and no-till. You know, how can we adapt some of that? And I had some ideas. I borrowed some equipment a couple times to plant covers, do some things that, and I thought, well, maybe I could buy some equipment now, but start looking at equipment. And I don't know if anybody's noticed when you're looking at used equipment, it's either really expensive or it's wore out. <laughs> so then I uh, heard about the sustainable I forget the Sustainable Food and Agriculture Grant Project. So I thought, well, might as well apply. And uh, so doing the application required a lot of thinking about what we really need, how we're going to operate and all that. But I figured, you know, that was time well spent thinking about it, whether we got the grant or not. So then... Uh, we were notified that we got the grant. It was the first year of the grant process and it was also the COVID year. So it took a while to work out all the details, and, but things got worked out and we got the equipment, which consisted of a uh, no-till drill, a roller crimper, and we bought shanks to build a yeoman subsoiler. Um, with the subsoiler there, uh, when it's on that tractor, it'll pull four shanks, but you need a bigger tractor, you put six shanks on it. So the drill is a land pride, three point. It's, it's not really a three point, it just hooks on the arms, and uh, it's 10 foot. That, uh, works pretty well. There's several things we could talk about. People probably have questions. And the roller crimper we put on the front because uh, if you're roller crimping or mowing, if you drive the tractor over at first, you got those wheel tracks, like when you mow and two days later, where you mow just popped up again. So you got 10 feet there and about four feet of wheel tracks. So. And when you got it on the front, if it works well, you can crimp and plant in one pass. So uh, we got there. We had it sized for about a 100 horse tractor and 10 feet. A good size to work the things for us. 
one of the things we've uh, learned about the roller crimping is you've got to have a decent crop to start with. If you're trying to roller crimp something that's, say, a foot tall, it's really not going to work. You need to be something like generally around three feet tall. And if you got a lot of diversity there, the stems are all sticking together. And when it comes down, it really makes a mat, which uh, there's, there's an example of a mat that rolled down real nicely. And then uh, you got the grill right behind there. And the grill, you see, you got all those stems laying in line. And the coulters are going to get right in there and then able to get the grill right in and plant, get good soil seed. And it all works well. You end up with a nice mulch and rows coming up. Obviously, those aren't pumpkins. So, um, anyway, uh, so the uh, the other things that we kind of learned, we've done with that equipment several different uh, strips we've tried. Uh, we've had some adopted a policy where because the drill is very quick and easy to hook up. If we have a piece of ground that's not going to be planted into any cash crop for a while, we can plant something in there for a cover, depending on the time of year and everything. So we've had a few that tried a lot of different things. We're still working on that. Uh, one of the things we've, uh, in uh, last year, or no, in 2021, we had a strip here that we planted. That's a mix. It's got a lot of things in it. I forget what all's in it. And you can actually see a little bumblebee up there on the sunflower. I had to take a picture of it because it was the first one I have seen in years. So I thought it was impressive. But this strip, when you got down in there, there was not a weed in it. And when you're talking about soil health and sun, there's no sun making it all the way to the ground. Every bit of sunlight is being caught by something. And that, that strip was about 50 feet wide. It was just right next to where a field of pumpkins where we fought weeds all summer. I don't remember how many thousands of dollars we spent on weeds. And uh, there was not a weed in here. So I'm like, okay, we got it now. That's going to roll down. We'll plant pumpkins in it. It'll make a beautiful map. And we'll be set. And I kept putting off rolling it. Because I was thinking, well, you know, if we get some snow or something, Maybe if it's still standing, even though it's mostly dead and you're seeing the sunflower, sorghum, those things, that, that it maybe holds snow better. But then, of course, that was the year we got the big winds on the 31st of December. And that strip ran north and south, and the winds came from the west and laid it crossways. Like I mentioned before, it, you want to plant the direction you rolled it. And uh, so our hit turned it every which way. I don't know. I, I guess I'm a newcomer here. Nobody told me the wind ever blows in the wind. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Sometimes you forget a lot of it. So we thought that would uh, be the deal. Uh, our row planter, a monosam that we plant pumpkins with, we've gotten it more no-till but it was not going to cut through that stuff we tried a few things but <laughs> one of those lessons learned and uh, a couple other lessons i'd say we've uh, in our any cover that we're going to plant a cash crop into especially 
actually pumpkins. Now we're trying to avoid usins like rye or oats, especially rye, because the allelopathic uh, effects last long enough that it just really holds everything back until the weeds also have a chance to come out. So we've avoided that. We have uh, just observations. We have where we've done most of our work there is about a 30 acre field. And on one end of it, it's all no-till. And the other end is more till. It's varied from year to year. But one of the things we really noticed like last year, we were putting down a couple of times. We put down an inch of water at one time with a linear sprinkler. And we were putting down that inch of water. And the, the spray pattern was here. You could be walking right just behind that spray pattern. And there was no standing water at all. It was all in the ground. And when we hit the the more conventional spots, you didn't want to walk across there for a few hours. And there was water standing. So that's uh, some other things we learned. We keep, keep trying. I'm still looking for that mix and timing to be able to roll it down and put the pumpkins in. And I haven't got there yet, but. Uh, if I get there, I'll let you know. <laughs> Are there any questions for Bob? Yeah. Bob, does this help you become more profitable in pumpkin operation? Um, I'd say not yet, but it's working on it. In, in some parts, we've been able to cut down on our, our, our big expenses cultivation that we're after and trying to improve soil health. So I think eventually it does, but you got to get the, a, lot of, a lot of things. Uh, it's like anything else. Yeah, just, well, well, let's just do this and everything will be great. It'll be perfect, but we're good. Yeah. Do you think livestock would help? Uh, probably so, but we are uh, along 287 and on any given morning, you might come along and find you got no fence for a ways. Well, I know that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I get nervous when I'm working close to the edge of the field with a tractor. Yeah. What was the spacing on your no-till cedar there? Uh, that is uh, seven and a half inch. So yeah, that's- you it. Put, you Put seed in every 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 one. Well, we just use that for cover crops. Our oh, our our row crop is a monosem, and it's set on twenty two inches because that's what we were doing a lot of other things on. So we do twenty two inches, and then a forty four inch gap, and another twenty two inches, depending on the pumpkins. There anywhere from a foot and a half to two feet or two and a half feet apart in the road. So that picture there was definitely, that was planted with the drill. Yeah. You gonna start doing new pick sunflowers too then? Um, I'm, I might. <laughs> <laughs> if I can get it worked out, it would be a, a good way to get things started a little sooner. It's a little scary when most of your money comes in over about six weeks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's uh, whatever you're farming, it's uh, it's always uh, the season where you got to worry about it. 